You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop that bird from building a nest in your hair. See? So the thoughts are going, shh, they, 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 here they come. Here comes that flock of birds. It's not just a bird, you know. <laughs> it's a flock. So when those thoughts come up, you know, they want to degrade us. They're, you know, degraded thoughts. I mean, we've been, you know, in a degraded condition of life for how long, you know, lifetimes. And, and so you just don't let it take you down there. You, you know, but how do you do that? By fighting it? No, or just don't pay it attention, just turn away. Hey there, this is Ruben from the Breaking Trail podcast, where you learn how to navigate life's journey through ancient wisdom. Very nice to have you here uh, for today's talk on how to master the mind. So I hope that you will find this very inspiring and helpful in your life. All right, so we got it. Mind. Today we are going to talk about the mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what we have to understand in the very beginning of all these subjects we discuss from the Vedic point of view is that we are spirit soul. We're not the mind. We're not the body. This this is crucial to really understand life, as you well know. I mean, we've been taught this. So, the spirit soul is who we are. We're the eternal spiritual person. But in the material world, we're covered by two layers of material energy. And the first layer is a subtle layer known as the mental body. And over top of the mental body is the gross layer or the gross body. And the, the information of the Vedas, you know, is explained very clearly in Bhagavad Gita. That information is so detailed, it says that the gross material energy is made up of earth, water, fire, air, and ether. These are five material elements that make up all gross or external matter, whether we're talking about dirt in the ground or whether we're talking about yeah. trees or whatever. The components are earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And then the mental body or the, is made up of mind, intelligence, and false ego. These are material elements too, but on a more subtle level. That's why you can't see them in a microscope. You, know, you can detect, you know, the gross elements. You know, earth is easy. You can just grab it in your hand, you know. Water, et cetera. You know, fire, a little more subtle. The air, even more subtle. But still, you can feel air. You can't really see it unless you live in a polluted city, <laughs> then you can see it very well. <laughs> you know, but you're not seeing the air, you're seeing the pollution. You know, the pollution is floating in the air. And then the ether, you know, and you know, that's that space between the molecules or whatever, you know, this but it's it's a, it's perceivable. Mm. But then you go to this subtle material energy, mind, intelligence. You can't really see those with the gross senses. The gross senses are limited to the gross matter. Because but, our senses are made up of yeah, fire, yeah. water, fire. Yeah, absolutely. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like water is such a major component of our body. You know, you know when we're born, I think they say we're 85% water. Yeah. And then as we age, go older and older, and, you know, in old age, it's like down to 70% or 65%. We're kind of drying up oh. kind of thing. That's why babies are are plump and juicy. 
and old people are kind of just dried up old prunes, you know? <laughs> exactly. <They're racing. laughs> the wrinkles come and the bones start showing through and whatever. <laughs> so anyway, but the, the subtle energy is very difficult to perceive. And because of that, it's also difficult to understand and work with and deal with and, yeah, you know. Yeah. But remember, this mental body is, it's also in, in yoga often referred to as the astral body. Mm. Or, you know, some people like to call it the psychic body. Because it's where the psyche is. Our desires, our emotions, our sentiments, our feelings, you know, manifesting our will and, and so on. This is on the psychic level. You know, and mind control you know, it can go either way. You know, yoga is all about mind control. We're going to read a, a verse from the Bhagavad Gita and an accompanying purport by Bhaktivedanta Swami, who translated this Bhagavad Gita from the original Sanskrit into English. And then since then, it's been translated into many, many other languages. But... You know, but, but mind control is not like it, it's not focused on anyone, everyone else, is it? Like it's more more of an inner control than an, well. That's the thing, you know. Some people who have evil intent like to control other people yeah. through yeah. their mind, psychic control, and some mm -hmm. people have some, you know, abilities to do so, you know, yeah. psychically. And you know, now, you know, the scientists are working on and I've already developed and are working to improve and further develop, you know, psychic weapons. You know, that's basically where these people come back to, oh, we can use this, you know, amazing energy and use it as a weapon against others, you know, to to destroy them really. Well, isn't and, this uh, what they already do with all the mass marketing? They were <laughs> like, that was kind yeah, of yeah. Well, that's like, the <laughs> that's the the soft, subtle approach. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you exactly. Know, and uh, the propaganda and all the other things that. But in other words, they're they're targeting the mind, yeah. and the mind, you know, then in turn, controls the external. So we have mind, intelligence, and false ego in this subtle dimension of material energy. We've talked about it before, but the subtle ego is, is the false understanding of who we really are, you know, and the goal of what life is. I mean, we are life. That is an eternal fact, you see. Mm. But we have a false conception of who we are, called false identity, or false ego. Ego means I. Mm. Mm. And so the, the false ego's number one uh, illusion is that we are our material bodies, and that our purpose in life is to enjoy. And that means enjoy the material body and enjoy the world in which we live. The world is filled with objects and according to, you know, our degree of, you know, attraction, we see certain objects as objects of pleasure. So we're trying to control those objects or acquire those objects or, you know, experience those objects in our life through our senses and so on and so on. But it's, it's the false concept of life that creates that. And then the intelligence is that layer or that, you know, ability to use, you know, intelligence. I mean, it's like, how can I acquire this? How can I enjoy this? How can I control this? How can I manipulate this? And the mind is, is the next layer. So we're going from most intimate, close to us, outward. We're going away. So, that's know? a false ego. It's like the closest. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the mm -hmm. closest 
covering or, you know, it's it's so subtle that it's almost like not a covering. It is a covering, but it's it's so intimate that it's like me. You know? And and then like as a consequence mm -hmm. of of the false ego, you have a certain like direction of your intelligence. Is that what you mean? Well, the, the, the false ego is basically very clear. I'm the enjoyer. This world yeah. is for me to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I'm the controller. I'm the master. This is the, the concept of identity. And the intelligence is employed to execute that. Okay, I'm the yes. enjoyer. How can I enjoy this yeah, 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 particular yeah object in the in the the best way to get the most pleasure or you know if it's difficult to acquire it how can i acquire it you know how can i control it and so on that's the intelligence and then the mind is the next layer out and this is where all of our thoughts are and attractions are and you know perceptions of the enjoyment see the intelligence is kind of employed by the mind, it's kind of, you know, the hierarchy is upside down. <laughs> you know, we've got the hierarchy misadjusted. So uh -huh. really the superior is the intelligence, but really what becomes superior in our contaminated or illusory state is the mind becomes superior to the intelligence. So the mind employs the intelligence. I, I see. The mind actually comes up with an idea. This is where ideas come from. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I will go skiing today. <laughs> That's a desire, okay? Mm -hmm. But I have obstacles in the way. I've got a wife who doesn't want me to go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That's, that's not me. Just so that it's like, I'm just saying this as an example. Speculative. Yes, I see. <laughs> or yeah, I've got a job, you see, that that you know prevents me from fulfilling this desire, you know. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I've got a, a a slight you know illness that is in the way. And so my intelligence immediately is employed, okay, how can I get around these obstacles? I can call in sick for work. I can convince my wife that it's good for me, you know, and I'll be a, a mellower guy when I come back than I am right now. I'm going to be pretty angst if, if I don't get to go. But if you let me go, you That's know, <laughs> it'll be good for That's you <laughs> on the long Run, you see. Exactly. <laughs> I recognize that. <laughs> or I don't feel too good, but I don't feel that bad. You know, mm -hmm. so I'll just take some ibuprofen or, you know, some some medication to kind of dull the the pain or whatever is going on. And in other in other words, intelligence is is figuring it out. Right, right. And then the gross body is just executing it. You know, yeah. okay, with my mind, yeah. I want to go skiing. So with my body, I, you know, get my skis. I put on all the right gear. I, you know, check the conditions and use the right wax or whatever I'm doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, then I go out and do what my mind has dreamed up. Yeah. You see? And so then I get enjoyment from that. Or I don't, depending on how it goes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the the idea is the mind is the central focus here. Mm. Right. Mm. And so really, we're just a product of our minds in all too many cases. And the people who are suffering from depressions and anxieties and so on, you know, that's another mental condition. And many times there's... There's certain, you know, physical problems that manifest and the doctors can't find any real reason for it. They run all the yeah. blood tests and the, exactly. you know, cardiovascular tests and this thing and that thing. And they say, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. But you know there's something wrong with you. you see? Yeah. And they say, well, it's just mental. 
You know, it's just your mental. You're imagining it or, you know, it, it's your mental condition that's creating this. And actually it's been shown, you know, that, you know, our mental condition has a huge effect on our physical condition. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, there's some of these natural doctors that say, no matter how good your diet is and your exercise regime and on and on it goes to make it so you're in optimum health physically, you know, if your mental condition doesn't change, then it's not going to work, you know, because mm -hmm. the mind has such a control over the body. You know, so if you're in anxiety and dressed out all the time and worried about everything and gripped with fear and anxiety, you're not going to have good health. No, no, it's, it's just, then that's just as real as yeah. that's just as real as having the physical problems themselves. Yeah. You know, the, yeah, and a lot of the times you don't have good physical condition because of that. Well, yeah, you know, mm. I mean, I, I've read. I mean, can I prove it? No, of course not. But I've read that you know the major cause of cancer is stress. You know, yeah. and and mental stress. No. Maybe you can eliminate the physical stress. But if you don't eliminate the mental stress, then you're going to hard, have a hard time recovering. Mm. Mm. So a lot of the, the natural, you know, approaches is, you know, try to change your mental state. Yeah. And, you know, you'll, you'll get much better results from whatever else you might be doing than you will if you don't. Yeah. So anyway, it, the point I guess we're trying to make is, the mind is a big player in life. But 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 I guess that's something we, like I, I guess we can come back to that. But I don't see like there doesn't seem to be like any other logical way to act than to have the mind being you know, in the center, like your desires, and you follow like your intelligence thinks how to do it, and then you act with your body. Like I, I don't know if you maybe you have an order on how you want to present this, but that's at least like I'm just thinking that's the. I don't see like the clear option to that pathway, so to speak. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. The mind is a big place. <laughs> but is it? Let's let's read because this is very relevant to this verse in Bhagavad Gita. This is from chapter six, which is the, the chapter on Shankya Yoga, and it's text number five. And. The speaker of the Bhagavad Gita is the Supreme Lord himself, and he says, A man must elevate himself by his own mind, not degrade himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. Conditioned soul meaning the soul in the material world who's conditioned by the three modes of material nature. Right. We've been talking about the last couple of times. We're conditioned by the, these modes of nature. We've been into that in a lot of detail. Mm. So the mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well, depending, you see. He want, man must elevate himself by his own mind, not degrade himself. Mm. So the mind's going to do one or the other. We can't run away from the mind. You see, you, it's, it's, you know, it's covering us. You can't get away from it. And I think people who have tried, you know, have <laughs> found out I can't get away from the mind. I can change all kinds of things. I can change my location. I can move to another country. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, change my environment. I can change the people I associate with. But my mind is still with me. It goes yeah. to bed with me at night. It hassles me all night. I wake up and it's still there. It hang, hassles me all during the day, and so on. You see, in other words, you can't get away from it. So better to live in such an intimate relationship with a friend than an enemy. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I guess yeah, because enemy. I mean, I, I just see like there's two different ways to see this. One is like you people tend to think like, okay, just get rid of your thoughts, get rid of your mind. I guess 
people see that as mindfulness as well, like just becoming, feeling nothing, thinking nothing. But then you realize how hard that is. And so you, so other people just turn to, okay, let's just be engaged fully in stuff all the time. So you never have time to think because if you do, you're, you know, the worries and the anxieties come. And so you're just like busy, busy, busy to make sure that you, you know, yeah, yeah. I guess it's like two different. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know you mentioned think of nothing but reality is anybody that's tried that has has discovered you can't think of nothing yeah because the mind is always active and it's it's activity is thinking so you're sitting there struggling with not thinking and that's thinking in and of itself <laughs> and if you hit some brief moment where it seems like you have no thought your first thing is i'm not thinking anything and that's a thought. <laughs> and that's a thought, and then you're just back to where you started, you know, and it's just completely frustrating. Yeah. So, you know, really that approach is it's just impossible. That's why people, they have these types of approaches and meditations and so on. They have to focus on something, so they often focus on their breath. Exactly, yeah. Focus on the breath, and not only just the breath in general, but at the tip of the nose, right where it goes in and comes out, see? Mm. And that's that's even drawing it down to a pinpointed, you know, object right here. Focus, there it is, there it is. See? But they're still thinking. They're still focusing the mind. They've just employed the mind. Mm. So, and yeah, then, of course, how long will that last? And then the mind drifts off. How long can you do that? Not 24 hours a day. You know, mm -hmm. and as soon as you stop doing that, there goes the mind again, just running like a wild horse, you know. And, and so, you know, this really is not the solution. It's kind, of, it's, it's kind of like a short term solution. Like you haven't really, you haven't really, what, like trained your mind? You haven't really like learned how to deal with the mind in a sense? You, you've just like temporarily harnessed it. I harnessed it exactly. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. You know, just harness it for a while and then let the horse out and <laughs> run around. You know, there you go. Yeah. I see. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. you know, you know, Krishna is saying the man must elevate himself by his own mind, not degrade himself. So it's obvious you can do either one or the other. You can elevate yourself. And he's talking about the spirit soul here. He's not talking about, you know, the, the false illusory self. He's talking about the spirit soul. Elevate himself or degrade himself. When, when we read about self, we're talking about the spiritual real self. You know? So that's the, the instruction, really. Now, let's read some of the purport here by Bhaktivedanta Swami. The word atma denotes body, mind, and soul, depending upon different circumstances. This is a Sanskrit word, atma. Mm -hmm. And it's often referred to, you know, the people often think of it, it's the atma is the self. See? Yeah, yeah. And in one sense, they use atma to, to encompass all three, body, mind, and soul. That's the atma, the combination. Mm -hmm. Or... You know, it can be broken down. Atma can refer to the soul, to the mind, or to the body individually. Hmm. So, the word atma denotes body, mind, and soul, depending on different circumstances. In the yoga system, the mind and the conditioned soul are especially important. The mind and the conditioned soul are especially important. And remember, the, in the yoga system, we're speaking from the yoga system. We're, mm. we're speaking from this platform. Mm. This is not mental speculation or something that we're, you know, coming up with. You know, this is authorized information. Since the mind is the central point of yoga practice, Atma refers here to the mind. Mm. And that's why you need a qualified authority to and understand what is being referred to in the original verse. Exactly. You see, it's a Sanskrit verse. In there is the word atmana, which is the Sanskrit version of atma. Yeah. So what is being referred to here? So again, we're, we're instructed. 
Here, Atma refers here to the mind. The purpose of the yoga system is to control the mind and to draw it away from attachment to sense objects. Okay, so that's given us a lot of knowledge here. The purpose of the yoga system is to control the mind and to draw it away from attachment to sense objects. And mm -hmm. as we know, and everybody listening knows, the mind is always thinking about sense objects, attached to sense objects. Yeah. You know. And according to the individual and how they, they vision envision pleasure, the mind will be attached to various different sense objects. Some people like one thing, some people like another thing. But sense objects meaning like that which the senses um, well, yeah, perceive. In, and... Well, not only perceive, but enjoy. Like food. Mm. The mm. tongue enjoys food. Yeah. That's the object. The food is the object yeah. of the sense, the tongue. Right. And the mind is actually, you know, looking at some food, like for a vegetarian or a vegan, you know, the mind is not attracted to meat. See? But for a lot of people, that's the most attractive. But it's still a sense object. See, so... Or for a skier, like, the mountain is really attractive, but the town is... The city is not. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And for all the city people, the mountains are not... They're cold, they're harsh, they're, <laughs> you know, too hard to get up and... You know, it's just uncomfortable and why do it kind of Th That's thing. exactly what my dad says to me all the time, every time that I say the crazy things that I'm doing, you know, I'm going to try to run from Tromsø to Trondheim this summer. And he's like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to torture yourself <laughs> voluntarily? <laughs> yeah. So his senses are perceiving it in a different way. Exactly. So his mental approach to that is that's stupid. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and your mental approach is, wow, that's exciting. You know, that's challenging. I, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so that's the, that's the point, though. Different objects of the senses. Mm. Mm. But all of this is, is drawing us into this material dimension. See, the mind is is attached to, attracted to, involved in sense objects. Yeah. And of course, there's always the opposite side of that too. You know, like we were just saying, you know, that same object might be repelling, not attracted to, no attachment, but the opposite, you know, repelled mm. by that. So it can, it, it can, but it's still the object and the mind's reaction to the object. That is like, could be attachment, could be repulsion. I see. You know, it see. repels me to even think about that. But it's still something involving the mind with the material object. Like a tet, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, attachment can go both ways. Attachment in a positive way or a negative way. I'm attached to not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, yeah, so, I see. Because it, it, it's like you're, you're still letting it... You're still focusing, fo focusing yeah. on it in some way, like it's yeah, yeah. It's 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 affecting you. It's affecting you. you know? yeah, yeah, it's exactly. affecting you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So let's read a little bit more. It is stressed herein that the mind must be so trained that it can deliver the conditioned soul from the mire of nascence. Nascence means ignorance. Mm -hmm. So you can train the mind. The the mind is not an independent entity although it, it assumes that position in most cases. Yeah, yeah. But really, the soul is superior to the mind. The soul is the Raj, the king in the body. You know? And then there's the super Raj or the super soul, the Lord in the heart. See? So the Lord controls the soul and the soul controls you know, the, the bodies, the mind, intelligence, false ego, and in the gross body. Oh, and and that's, the, that's the proper that, that's hierarchy. That's what it should be. Yeah, that's exactly what I was, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. the proper hierarchy. So when the hierarchy is upside down, you know, then things don't produce good results. See? So <clears throat> the train the mind must be trained. So 
it can deliver the conditioned soul from the mire of nascence. If we don't have knowledge, what we're speaking here is obvious knowledge that, that we have gained from the yoga teachings. Did I know any of this before I studied these yoga teachings? And the answer is no, I had no idea. You know, I, of course, I knew everybody's got a mind, everybody thinks and whatever, whatever. But as far as training it, controlling it, and, mm. you know, the idea in many cases of the conditioned soul is let the mind run free. You know, that's freedom. Freedom to think what I want, freedom okay. to therefore do what I want because the mind thinks of it, then I should have the freedom to execute that desire, mm -hmm. yeah. that thought. I mean, yeah. that's that's what liberation is in, in many people's definition. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that's what, you know, mm -hmm. prog progress is, the progression of society has been toward more and more freedom of this type of freedom. But, but, know, but that no, makes sense. If you, if you think that the mind is like a separate entity, then that makes totally sense. Like it has its own will and you're, I don't know, but, but then you're serving the mind. That's the idea. Yeah. You're the slave. You're the, yeah. You're the slave mm. of the mind. Slave of the mind. It's... And so the mind becomes us. It doesn't really, but it, it does. Like, I want this. I need that. I'm going to do this. This I is really the false I. It's the mind. You see, and the mind comes up with all kinds of proposals that we have followed for our whole life and many lifetimes, really. But just say in this life, and so many, and the proposals always: this will make you happy. This is going to be cool. Let's let's enjoy this. This is going to be great. And so, you think it's you. You think it's yeah. I want this, and and so you do it. And it turns out to be not great, not cool. It wasn't fun. It caused me a lot of problems. You know, maybe there was some temporary pleasure, but hmm. the overall complexity and result I'm paying the price for right now. You say, why did I do that? Why did I think that was a good idea? Hmm. You know, <laughs> but the mind, so you understand, okay, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. But then the mind comes up with another proposal and you just jump in and do it again. Something else. You know, and it happens again and again and again. You know, talk about relationships or whatever, you know. The mind said, this is going to be great. This is good. This is, you know, going to work out. And, yeah, and so yeah. you follow it right in, you know, and the senses get all involved and the emotions and, you know, the heart gets involved and you jump in and then, you know, Pretty soon you're just in an entangled mess and you say, well, that wasn't a good idea. And so, you know, somehow or other it ends or whatever through much difficulty. And then some short time later, the mind comes up with another proposal. Same same proposal, just was, a different object. I was, was going to say, that's the thing. Like you, you tend to do these mistakes on and on. <laughs> like you seem to repeat the thing because you don't maybe train your mind. Like you, you just have the habits... Well, you that listen to there. your mind. Yeah, you just right, listen right, to right. your mind. Mm. And then you jump right back in, and pretty soon you're back into that same thing again. <laughs> and you go, man, am I ever going to learn? And the answer is, as long as you listen to the mind, no. Because, again, the mind and the senses are in cahoots. You know, it's not only the mind is the instigator. Many times the senses perceive the object and that perception goes to the mind, and then the mind picks it up and runs with it. Uh, so it goes both ways. Kind of, kind of like, you know, yeah. You weren't even thinking of doing something. Yeah. You know, you're walking down the street. You're not even hungry. You're not even thinking about eating. And then your nose smells donuts mm. or a pizza mm. or, <laughs> you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, that sense perception runs to the mind, and all of a sudden the mind says, Wow, let's go in there and get that. You know, let's have a pizza. You know, that that wasn't on your mind mm -hmm. until the senses perceived it, and now it's controlling you from that angle. So it goes both ways. You can't just isolate it, it all goes one way. It's a two way street. Yeah. You know, yeah. see. You see the beautiful lady or the handsome guy, and all of a sudden the whole scenario 
breaks out. You know, you were just going along, you know, and it w wasn't even on your mind. But then again, it's all it's con con envelops you, you know, consumes the mind. So that's that's how we have to understand these things. They're working together, back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So let's read a little bit more. Uh, it must be so trained that it can deliver the conditioned soul from the mire of nascence. Ignorance, not knowing who I am, not knowing the proper hierarchy, not knowing that I, the spirit soul, can never receive real happiness and pleasure from any material source, etc. This is knowledge. This is knowledge, and we don't have that knowledge in most cases. In material existence, one is subjected to the influence of the mind and the senses. See, one is subjected to the influence of the mind and the senses. Here we are, just a tiny little innocent spirit soul, and here comes the influences. And then you remember that the mind is, and the senses, in turn, are influenced by the modes of nature. So there's a big picture here. You yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. We talked about, about all that before. In fact, the pure soul is entangled in the material world because of the mind's ego, which desires to lord it over material nature. See, not the pure ego, the mind's ego. I am the enjoyer. I am the master. I am the Lord. This world is my home. See, all of this is, is for me to enjoy. See, this is my playground. I'm, I'm, that's my mind's ego. And mm. so we get completely entangled in the material world. But, but that, like, that doesn't even seem, I mean, I, I was just reflecting on this. You sent a video <laughs> of some, some guys skiing in Lingen, you know, the Lingen Alps here in close to Tromsø, a beautiful, beautiful place. But, and they were, and the guy said about avalanche, it's like, because he was trying to be as careful as he as he possibly could, you know. But but like he, he just said like you you can't eliminate the risk of avalanches. But then like so the but but his his conclusion is though well survival isn't the the end goal. Like his goal if he, if the end goal was survival, he would just sit home. But 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 then it's, so it's like the subtle um uh, I guess just idea that it's there is that well of course the end idea is to just enjoy yourself fully so, and that's why he skied you know to enjoy himself because that that's where he got his enjoyment for though it's different from other people's you know what they would see as enjoyment but 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 you know what it's it's like that that that's just the underlying idea that it's there it's not like he didn't even need to say it it's just it's just you understand that it's there of course you're the enjoyer like what what else would be the like yeah. there's no option to that I mean. <laughs> yeah, so so his desire to enjoy overrides everything else. Yeah. Mm. So his intelligence, he's using it as much as he can to mitigate the risk. Exactly. You know, so they dig pits to see the stability of the snow, and mm. they consider the time of the day and the amount of heat or lack thereof, you know, and how that's going to affect the snow and the angle of the slope. In other words, they're using their intelligence and past experience and other people's past experience to try to analyze the danger as much as possible. Yeah. But it's limited, like he said, and you can't eliminate all danger. The unexpected can always happen. It wasn't supposed to slide because all the... The conditions were, you know, pointing towards safety and mm. stability, but for some reason, it did, mm. you know, and that's many people lose their lives in avalanches doing the, that that sport because, you know, it's not like they go out today and say, okay, let's go out and get in an avalanche, That'd be cool. <laughs> no. But you won't believe this. This is a this is a side story, but. <laughs> One time, a, a friend of ours who knew nothing about skiing came to Austria. We were there. I wasn't actually <clears throat> there that particular day. I had another thing to do. But they go out skiing, and, and of course, his suggestion was to our friends he was with, let's set off an avalanche. I think that would be really cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, they just looked at him and go, man, you are nuts. You know, you're a liability here. We, we don't know if you should go home right now or what, you know. You just follow us. You don't be involved in this. But, but anyway, that, that's an exception. Most people, you know, they know that's not the thing you want to do. <laughs> but the idea is the desire to enjoy that particular adrenaline rush is what it really is, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But you can't get exactly that adrenaline rush in other places. Mm -hmm. It's stronger than... The survival instinct, okay, but if I was survival was the end game, I'd just stay at home. Yeah, you know, and, and life is all about that. You know, it, there's always weighing the two issues. Mm -hmm. You know, well, is this worth that? You know, there's a mm -hmm. risk here, but is is the risk, you know, worth it to get the end goal? And mm -hmm. exactly. And it's always a juggling act. Exactly, exactly. As long as you're trying to enjoy the world. Mm. I mean, that's, that's the game everybody's playing on all kinds of different levels. Because it's like all, 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 all enjoyment comes with some kind of risk. Like, you, uh, Of course, you know. yeah, yeah. Therefore, so, you know, the, the soul is entangled in the material world because of the mind's ego, which desires to lord it over material nature. Therefore, the mind should be trained so that it will not be attracted by the glitter of material nature, and in this way, the conditioned soul may be saved. One should not degrade oneself by attraction to sense objects. The more one is attracted by sense objects, the more one becomes entangled in material existence. Now, this goes against the grain of a materially conditioned soul. I mean, our consciousness is not that. No. Our consciousness is this is what life is for, yeah. to enjoy, you know, the senses mm -hmm. and, the, and the objects of the senses. Yeah. And if, if you, you know, philosophy is to don't be attracted to the glitter of the material world, there's no point in living. <laughs> I mean, really, if you think about it, the people who commit suicide, for instance, voluntarily kill themselves, are the people who have lost all attraction for the glitter. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they've tried mm -hmm. it. They've tasted this and that. They've done this. They've done that. You know, it didn't bring them the happiness that was promised. You know, they bought into the mind's desires again and again. Now the mind you know, has come up with another idea, you know. Okay, well, let's just kill ourselves and be done with it. There's no happiness here anyway. It was all a scam, you know. Or the pain is greater than the happiness. Again, like, because you, you, you had that balance that you talked about before, you know. And, and so if you just have, I mean, if you find yourself in a situation where the pain is greater than the pleasure, you know, for a longer period, then, then that's where you're going to go. Like, that's what the natural conclusion would be. Yeah. Let's just end it. Yeah. So let's eliminate it. And that's the pleasure. Yeah. The pleasure is escaping the pain. Getting rid of the know, pain. Negation of the negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course, as you know, we, you know, have talked about before, because we're eternal spirit souls, you can't kill yourself. You know, you can just, you know, destroy the physical body, still covered by the mental body. This mind, which caused you all the problem in the first place, is still, still covering. There. You take on <laughs> another gross physical body in your next life, and the whole scenario continues. You know, and it just repeats itself again and again. So that's not a solution, and that's where the knowledge comes in. See, in ignorance, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm the body and I kill my body, then I cease to exist. So, you know, that's what many people try to do. Just stop the whole show, stop the world, I want to get off. Mm. But it doesn't work. Mm. But it's too late. You know? <laughs> Once you've done that, it's too late. And so the karma or the, the reaction that comes from that activity of suicide 
is huge and, and brings with it immense suffering. You know, so not only do you continue with the same mind and its, you know, difficulty and all the, the suffering from all the activities in the world of, you know, reactions, but you've got additional karma from that action. I mean, it's, it's very, very severe karma or results or punishment for killing the body. So you just add to the whole misery. That's that's result of ignorance. We're not taught these things. Nobody taught us these things. No, no. The yoga teaching is is telling us these truths. See? So, you know, the point ha is made as long as we're attracted to the material world, the mind is not trained, and we're trying to enjoy the mind's false ego. I'm the enjoyer, and on and on it goes. Then we're in the material world of birth, disease, old age, death. We're creating karma with every action we perform. Even if it's pious activity, karma is still there and keeps us on the wheel of birth and death. Even good karma means i got to take another birth to get a reward. you know. Mm. got to be present to win kind of thing. So... You know, but we don't know these things. This is this is the unfortunate thing. We don't know this truth. So we just go about living our lives according to the impulses of the senses, the demands of the mind and the senses, you know, the the influences of the modes of nature, you know, the influences of society, which is also, you know, a reflection of the influence of the modes of nature mainly passion and ignorance. And we're just this little helpless atomic spirit soul uh, just being smashed around by the waves of life. Mm. Sometimes they use the example of a stick, you know, in, in the waves of the ocean, mm. you know, and you can see that one way picks it up and throws it this way, Another way sucks it back out. Another way smashes it and washes it up on the shore. Another one brings it back out. And, you know, it's just going along as the currents move. Up and down and here and there. And, and sometimes you're on the top of the wave. Sometimes you're on the bottom of the wave. You know, oh, life is good. You know, crash. Life is not good. And then up and down, you know, the disappointments and the joys and but it, 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 it's no pleasure for the soul, regardless of, you know, where I am, you know, in that wave ocean. <laughs> well, I guess, uh, but, but that just shows like the forces are so great. I mean, it's maybe it's like in inevitable to be in that position or maybe it's hard to see an alternative because, I mean. Well, yes, it is, unless you have the yoga and teaching. Yoga teaching is not only presenting the problem, it presents the solution as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, a... that's what we must also focus on, not just the problem. Mm. We can talk about the problems and maybe you people will agree, yes, 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 I agree, I agree. But without a solution, it's still the same problem. You know? So we're going to get to that right here. The best way to disentangle oneself is to always engage the mind in God consciousness. In other words, become conscious of the Supreme Lord. Thinking about, acting on the instructions of the Supreme Lord, which is, you know, the yoga teaching. That's what the yoga teaching is. That, that, the that's word quite, quite an unknown to people, I think. I mean, well, like... The, 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 it that. is unknown, but it doesn't have to be unknown. Right. You see. The word he in H-I, in this Sanskrit word, that's a Sanskrit word. The word he is used for emphasizing this point. That is, that one must do this. It is also stated, for mind, for, excuse me, for man, mind is the cause of bondage, and mind is the cause of liberation. 
mind absorbed in sense objects is the cause of bondage, and mind detached from the sense objects is the cause of liberation. Therefore, the mind is always, which is always engaged in God consciousness is the cause of supreme liberation. Yeah. So, well. are we interested in that or not? It's an individual thing. But, you know, it's possible to redirect the mind. You know, consciousness is, is a reflection of the, the presence of the soul. It's a symptom of the soul, consciousness. Right. As long as, because soul is conscious, spirit is conscious. There's no such thing as the soul, and then independent of that, there's consciousness. The soul is conscious eternally. So, therefore, what is the condition of our consciousness? And then material consciousness, which is referred to so often in these teachings, our consciousness is all about the material world and the mind and the senses and the objects and enjoying and all the things that we've been referring to. That's the consciousness. But if we have spiritual consciousness, that means I am conscious or aware of. I'm not the body. I'm not the mind. I'm eternal spirit soul, that somehow or other I have fallen into this material world. Now I am here. See? But I'm conscious that this isn't where I should be. I'm conscious that there is a real place where I can achieve everything that I'm trying to achieve here. Mm -hmm. Happiness, pleasure, satisfaction, peace, harmony, mm -hmm. you know, joy, you know, not just, you know, happiness, but joy. It's called ananda in, in Sanskrit. It means spiritual bliss. Mm -hmm. There is a place where that exists. I'm always looking for the perfect person in, in life. I mean, everybody's looking for the perfect person, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and whether we're actively pursuing it or just, you know, innately, knowing I need a perfect person in my life, it's, it's no question. That's a real requisite for happiness and satisfaction. I, I need that perfect person. See? So with this yoga knowledge, this information and understanding, I know that that perfect person is the supreme person, perfect in every way. See? If you list all the qualities that you would like to see in another person, see, your ideal, you know, they, they, they have uh, build your dream bike, you know, if you're in bicycles. <laughs> you know, you can, on the internet, you can build your dream bike. I want this frame and I want these brakes and I want these wheels and these gears and, and this saddle and all the components. Build your dream bike. <laughs> Perfect suspension that you think. Okay, well, if you build your dream person, see, what you want that dream person to be like, see, you can see that the Lord fulfills all of those dreams and much more because we can't, our dreaming ability is very limited. See. But the supreme person fills all that he fulfills every dream and unlimitedly more than that. So these things have to gradually be accepted, you know, assumed. I have to actually take that in, consider it, work toward that perfection, and come to the understanding, yes, this is what I really want. Then employ the mind and the intelligence and the senses in achieving that goal. That is the goal. That's training the mind. It's not stopping the mind. It's not just focusing right, on right. this at this moment. It's another whole 
dimension of focus. See, a spiritual, that's why it says God consciousness, conscious of God. And that's just, you know, not only, you know, just some concept of a big old authoritative person, you know, up in the sky somewhere, you know, judging and pointing and restricting and no, but, you know, in our Vedic teaching, you know, in the Bhakti Yoga teaching, we understand about the the beauty and the the attractiveness and, and the wonder and the softness and the love of that supreme person. And so you become more and more attracted to that. See, that's now you ha you're still attracted. But There's still an the, attraction. But not to the because, glitter. But not to the glitter, but to the real thing. See? Not to the false promises, but the real promise. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the evolution of the soul. That's the spiritual journey, you know, gradually more and more. So you start, you know, being very discerning about, you know, your senses. What do I want going in these ears? You see, mm. what do I want to expose my ears to mm. Mm. or my eyes to? What do I want to contemplate on? Where am I going to let my mind go? Because that's exactly what I was going to say. All these things in your senses are going to get to your mind. Like you said before, that's going to shape your mind. Yeah. So gradually you, you're becoming the controller, the master of the mind and the senses. Okay, I'm not going to let, you know, that enter my ears. I'm not going to expose my senses to that. I'm not going to expose my mind to these thoughts. I don't want to hear that stuff because I know what the, the result will be. You know, we've already got so much garbage in there anyway that you don't have to put any more in. I mean, there's plenty of garbage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it will regurgitate itself, Oof. you know. It just keeps coming up, stuff that from, you know, so many years ago that you can't even believe you can still remember it's it. Exactly. All of a sudden, it's just as vivid as it was at the moment it exactly. occurred. And it, you hadn't thought about it for 40, 50 years. I mean, you're not <laughs> even that old. But you <laughs> I know, know, but I know it's it's really unforgiving. Like you can't, I, I, it's because you, you you do that mistake. I mean, we, we I, I we have we all have a background. Like I didn't I didn't I wasn't born a yogi or something. I'm trying to live this lifestyle now, but I haven't done that for so long. You know, seven, six seven years. Like I have a lot of, of stuff <laughs> that happened before that. Like you said, it's like coming back, coming back, and I'm like, wow, how. <laughs> I don't even, where did that come from? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like that big garbage pit. And every now and then something stirs it up and bloop, <laughs> it just comes up, you know. But when that, and that's going to happen, you know, that's not going to disappear. Mm. But now what is your uh, reaction to it? You see, are you attracted to it? You know, and and do you want that to be there? No, Are you just no, grabbing no. that and holding on to it and mm. and kind of just reliving that moment and enjoying it? Or are you kind of just like, no thanks? Yeah. You know, yeah, I did that. I, you know, I, I, that's done. You know, but that's not who I am now. You yeah. know, I don't I don't want to to go there now. You, you, you know, you may make that choice, sort of thing. Yeah. So you become discriminating from the outside and the inside. Mm. In other words, the thought comes up, but you discriminate. Is this a, something that's going to be helpful in my spiritual journey to meditate on, to, you know, think about, you know, or is it something that, you know, I don't need to deal with? I don't want to deal with it. You know? And then you just kind of let it pass, and it will. You know, you don't focus on it. You don't follow it. See? That's the point. You know, my spiritual master, Siddha Sarupananda Paramahamsa, said a, I made a statement quite some years ago now, but I never forgot it. You know, because we're all dealing with the mind, you know. So he was, he was talking about the mind and, you know, it keeps coming up with things and whatever. And he says, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop that bird from building a nest in your hair. 
See? So the thoughts are going, they, 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 here they come. Here comes that flock of birds. It's not just a bird. <laughs> it's a flock, you know, and they're flying over. You know, you can't stop that, but you can stop the bird from building a nest in your hair, you know. So when those thoughts come up, you know, they want to degrade us, they're, you know, degraded thoughts. I mean, we've been, you know, in a degraded condition of life for how long, you know, lifetimes. And, and so you just don't let it take you down there. You, you know, but how do you do that? By fighting it? No, or just don't pay it attention, just turn away. You know, if somebody comes up and starts talking all kind of garbage at you, you know, there's two things you can do. Try to fight the guy, you know, mm. get involved in a whole struggle. Shut up. Don't tell me that. Blah, blah, you know, and just, then it turns into another whole thing. Or you just walk away. You know, mm. you just walk away, you know. Mm. And you don't only walk away, but then now you consciously bring in, you know, what you want in there. And that's why the, we're the mantras that we're always, you know, chanting and, and encouraging people to chant. You just, you know, start chanting the mantras, you know, thinking of the truth. You know, now the mind has another place to go. You know, it's got, it's got another engagement. You engage the mind. Okay, again, mind. The mind. The mind. The mind cannot be non-active. Again, that's... Yeah, yeah, you, you got to... Yeah. Yeah. An, an idea uh, that's sometimes used is a, a kid is active by nature. Two-year-old kid. Yeah. I mean, you can't, okay, kid, just go sit down and do nothing <laughs> for one hour. Right. You know, <laughs> impossible. You know, but you have to engage that kid in a, in a, a safe, positive activity. You know, so the kid picks up a butcher knife. You know, okay, you know, he's running around with this knife, you know. You just go over and gently take the knife out of his hand and give him a suitable toy, you know, mm. and everything's okay. You know, you, the mind is like that kid, you know. It's always running around doing stupid things. So you just re-engage it, you know, and that's, that's our position. That's the hierarchy, right? I am superior to the mind and the senses. Mm. Mm. And the intelligence has to be used also in conjunction with the superior knowledge. Mm. See? There, there, there's uh, the, the, this quote by, uh, I, yeah, this is a quote by Bhaktivedanta Swami, actually. Uh, I, I, just, I just found it before this talk and, and because he said, this uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy of the living entity. If one neglects it, if one neglects it or gives it a chance, it will grow more and more powerful and will become victorious. Although it is not factual, it is very strong. It covers the constitutional position of the soul. Yeah. And what is that constitutional position? It covers. It covers the position of I am the servant of God. It covers that. And instead, we become the servant of the mind. Exactly. Yeah. It, but but the, and that almost makes it seem like the mind is, a, is an entity in itself. Like it has a will. <laughs> you know, it has a will of covering us. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's an instrument for the modes of nature. Mm. You know, it, it's like there or... You know, we talk about the illusory energy personified as Maya Devi, you know, the illusory energy. And Maya Devi and her, you know, we could say forces of power or the modes of nature, you know. So the mind becomes an instrument for her doing. You know, we become the servant of Maya Devi. It's, it's described often like that. You know, we're her puppet. The soul is, is infant, infinitesimal, see, atomic in size. So we're going to be controlled by one of two personalities, the Supreme Lord or Maya Devi, the superior energy or the material energy. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to be a puppet. I'm, nobody's an independent controller. Yeah. We're controlled by either one of two forces, superior or inferior. Mm-hmm. And so I have to choose which one I want to control me, which one I will allow to control me. And that's really the only choice we have. But under illusion, I think I'm the controller, just like you said. It seems like the mind's another living entity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause so, so that's kind of, yeah, that, that's part of the illusion that you don't really see the force that is controlling you. But it, it is controlling you, but you're in the illusion that it's you. Like, you are not being controlled because you're independent. Like, it's... You think that the and that's mind why it's so so perfectly able to control it. Well, exactly, because the worst enemy is the enemy you can't see. Like you don't even know he's there. You don't know mm-hmm. know he's an enemy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, it seems like the enemy is the friend. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know. Kind of like. And, a... But not the real friend. So that's why we need this knowledge, and we need to use this, and with our intelligence, apply the teaching. Mm-hmm. You know. Because if we don't, then we're the victim. Hmm. And, you know, victims are not uh, <laughs> the best to be. It's not our, it's, it's, again, it's not our constitutional position. It's not, it's not where we find happiness because that's not how it's meant to be, you know, and we can only be happy if we are like in harmony, I mean, with how it's supposed to be, with our position to the supreme yeah yeah happiness is love and and happiness is love for god that's that's the reality you know and nobody can deny that love and happiness are synonymous real love mm. you know? and no matter how disappointed we have become and how much we just have given up on love because you know it never works because it's not real love, it's lust. Mm. Still, we want it, we need it, because that's the that's what sustains the soul. You know, it's love. You know, and so all of this glitter of the world just takes me away from from that. Mm. So I love the world, yeah. and the world doesn't give back <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> the love that I need. Oh. <laughs> no. And uh, so, yeah, we go through life, you know, in a compromised position. Mm. But how do you, what's, 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 so, so what's the ultimate idea? Let's, so let's, you know, we came back to redirecting the mind and, and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, I, I read as well, he, he said that, you know, one should, <laughs> One should beat the mind with a shoe a hundred mm-hmm. times in the morning. <laughs> Our first yeah. business should be <laughs> to. <laughs> what's uh, you know? Can, can you explain how, how how you do that and what's 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 the actual way to to achieve these things that we're talking about through mantra meditation? And... Well, you you know, in our bhakti yoga process, we have a a process that you engage in on a regular basis. The meditations. For instance, the mantra meditations that we do, studying the scripture, hearing this information, you know, associating with people who are also, you know, on this path, so to speak, trying to control their minds, control their senses, you know, that that are promoting, you know, the association is 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 such that that you know we have the help of other people trying to make you know, the Lord and, and, you know, service to the Lord, the center of their life. So we're encouraged by that and we're influenced by that. And so that's why, you know, a lot of people try to go out and do this on their own, you know, without any kind of association. But they have association with the opposite. Everybody else they associate with is on the opposite page doing you know, the goal is the glitter, mm. you know, and being successful in, in the glitter. And so we get influenced by that. So, 
you're trying you're the you're the black sheep going upstream and everybody else is going downstream that's very difficult <laughs> that's very you tough know, it makes it extremely difficult mm. so that's why one of the recommendations is association with people who are doing this you know and maybe you say well i don't live around anybody that even has any interest in this but we now have the wonder of the internet and just like right now, we're discussing these exactly. things. Exactly. So a person can be listening to this, and that's, you know, an influence. Yeah. Or yeah. they can be listening to somebody else, yeah. and that's an influence. Mm. Exactly. You know, and you have to choose. So that's where the intelligence comes in, and that's where the discrimination comes in. You know, mm. I discriminate who I allow myself to hear from, you know, and... So therefore, I'm becoming more selective, and and it takes effort. It takes a, actually, it takes a, a desire. You know, if we consider ourselves to be sick, you know, this with this material disease of enjoying the world, the glitter, the the mind controlling us, and that that's not the the healthy condition of the soul. Mm. So, non health can also be described as disease. So if we consider ourselves sick and I want to get well, then I have to do what is necessary to get well. I have to take the medicine yeah. as prescribed by the physician. And the supreme physician is the supreme lord. You know, his representative, Bhakti Bhadanta Swami Prabhupada, uh, Siddhasarupananda, Bhakti Sadanta, who you just quoted from, mm -hmm. uh, Saraswati. Etc. They are the physicians. They know the disease. They know the cure. You know, and and their words of wisdom, you know, are to be paid attention to. If I want to get well, mm. if I want to just, you know, hope to get well, but don't do anything to get well, then that's just a fantasy. It won't work. So you know, it begins with a desire, you know, just to to have a better life, to be more happy, to be more calm, to be more peaceful. Maybe it's not even, you know, consciously a spiritual desire. I'm just tired of what's going on right now in my life, you know. Yeah. Or maybe I'm okay with what's going on in my life. Maybe I'm even quite, you know, enlivened by what's going on in my life. But maybe there's something better. Yeah, exactly. As good as this is, maybe there's something better. Exactly. You know? And I, I want to, if there is such a thing, I want to know it. I want to be a part of that. That's also a driving force. So that's more like how it was for you, wasn't it? <laughs> if I remember. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I had no problems. Yeah. None. <laughs> you know, I had everything as it was, could be from my material desires, you know? Mm. No rent, you know, healthy, <laughs> young, uh, no job, no, you know, nothing in the way of my surfing every day, living in Hawaii, Kauai, the best waves, you know, and every day I could go and surf as long as I wanted. You know, any day I didn't surf, it's because I didn't want to surf. You know, it was my full freedom. Everything was free. You know, I was basically a fruitarian eating fruit off the trees, you know, and there was a lot of it and it was just available. You know, it wasn't like I had to look for, you know, mm. the magic to find it. It was just there. So anyway, I was on cloud nine. You know, I had a, the best friend, you know, Painoplas, and, you know, we were sharing this, this joy together. You know, after some time we came together. So I also had a friend to share it with, you know. But I was still thinking, maybe there's something better than this. As good as this is, <laughs> maybe there's something better. <laughs> <laughs> and there was. And we started, you know, thinking about spiritual things and talking about spiritual subjects and reading books and yoga books and listening to different, you know, People talking about higher consciousness and, you know, reflecting on the life of Jesus. And, you know, it just was a natural progression, mm. you know, in this direction. And it, 
it was a different kind of pleasure, you know. It was it was just on another level, you know, an internal different. It wasn't, you know, the same. Mm. It was different, but it was also, you know, more deep and, and more real. And it was mm. understandable that I'll never be too old to do this. Well, that's you know? exactly what I was going to say, because all the things you <laughs> describe, I mean, they're, they're really dependent on your external environment to be like yeah. that. But when that changes, what's what's left? Yeah, yeah I mean, you're not going to get too old to feel like this and think yeah. like this. And, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, no matter what your economic situation is, you can still be here in, in this dimension mm. and on and on and on and on. You know, and I could understand that, yeah, this is this is superior. Yeah. So my mind was gradually going from the waves to this. See, it, my, my I was thinking more each day in this way. I was still thinking about the waves. Don't get me wrong mm -hmm. here. <laughs> you know, but but it was you know more emphasis in the spiritual arena, we'll call it, the way of life. And and it was fulfilling, and it wasn't any struggle for me. i got to give up this and give up that, and, oh, I'm addicted to this. I wasn't addicted to anything. I, well, I was addicted to surfing, but that just kind of, <laughs> that addiction just kind of got less and less strong, you know. It was like, it kind of just dissipated, you know. It wasn't like I just threw my surfboard out the window and said, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is evil. I'm not gonna quit doing this. You know, it, it was just an evolution. You know, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and along the way, you know, as as things progressed, I met my spiritual master. You know, and I knew at that moment that here is the missing link. This is the guy. This is the person who already knows you know, this world and this life and the mm. goal and has achieved it and can be one who can enlighten me, can guide me. Mm. And I can, all I got to do is just follow my teacher, you know, and I, I just had that understanding. It, that's how it was. And it's been like that, you know, the whole time. You just like you, yeah. You you you, that was confirmed within sort of sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah he didn't give me his guru card, <laughs> <laughs> guru certification. <laughs> you know, no. It was yeah. just like here it was. I knew it. I understood it, and that gave me that that topmost association. You know, and you know. Whatever, that's how it worked for me. I, that's my personal story. Everybody's got a story, mm. you know. And But many people, they just don't have an interest in this, you know. Like what we're talking about today will not interest very many people, really. <laughs> you know. Yeah. If it interests just one person, you know, wonderful. You know, and... Uh, but you got your story, you know, and you weren't always interested in, in spiritual life either. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Nope. <laughs> so, um. you know, but gradually, thanks, through association, through a little interest, right? You went to some mm -hmm. classes and mm. heard some information that was superior to something you had heard before. and Exactly. And it just really, like, like that's the beauty of it. It's... It's not like a big struggle. It's just like a gradual thing. Like, you know, people are, people can so be, and in religious circles as well, people can be so fanatic and just like all or nothing now, you know, surrender now or we'll, you know, kill you or something. Yeah. They're trying to, but, but, and the same thing with like even in terms of diet, you know, there are people that are so extreme vegans or vegetarians, you know, just like you have to change now, otherwise, you know. You're gonna no, but just, no. Take a gradual thing, like be more slowly, more attached to the the better taste, the 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 taste that will actually satisfy you, the the better path, and you know the 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 bad habits, the old attachments. They will just sort of 
not be that important anymore. They they don't have a place in your life. Like that's really how it was for me. Really, with the vegetarian diet as well, the same. Like it just gradually lost interest in that and in, in meat. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, lost interest. That's a good word. Mm. You know, I'm just not interested in that mm. anymore. And if the mind comes up and tries to say, "Oh, but do you remember how good that was?" Now you've got intelligence. You understand? No, nah, mm. I'm not listening to you. That's mm. that's not that's bad information, man. That's not a good thing. Mm. But you don't even get into a big dialogue with the mind. You just don't. You just don't pay attention. You just, you know, if it gets you for a moment, you just, nah, nah, I don't want that. You know. But but that's where I I and I just can't come back to this idea of, like that you have the that guidance it's not just like you you're you're speculating what could be good but you have the supreme guidance of of the most loving person and his representatives who are who who are showing you yeah. path like it's <laughs> exactly what did, what did we just read right here uh the word he is used for emphasizing this point, that is, that one must do this if they want to be successful. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But the yoga teaching is if you want to be successful and happy and harmonious, and you must do this. Mm -hmm. It's just like an a expert physician. If you want to get well, you must do this. You know? Hmm. You can choose to do it or not, but if you want to get well, you must do this. Yeah. You see? And so that's that's what a person is encouraged by, you know, someone they respect, someone who they accept as an authority. Hmm. Is you gotta do this. I mean, look at every athletic coach, you know, that and, and every trained athlete, I don't care high how high they are in their discipline, has a coach. Hmm. You know, the best guy in the world in tennis or whatever has a coach, somebody that tells him what to do. Can you imagine? Hmm. Here's the guy's the best tennis player in the world, but his coach tells him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he, he doesn't say, shut up, I'm the best. Don't tell me what to do. Hmm. You know, because he accepts. So the coach says, you must do this. Okay, in MMA, mixed martial arts fighting, you know, the trainer says, okay, this opponent is like this and like this and like this. Therefore, you must do this, 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 if you want to win. So the spiritual trainers, the spiritual coaches, you know, the spiritual teachers, masters, the Lord and his representatives say, okay, if you want to be successful, you must do this. You know, it's not like they're trying to control us. They're trying to save us. <laughs> you know, because they know the opponent and they know the situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. People often get, you know, get offended. They all, you're trying to tell me what to do. You know, they're trying to save your life. You know, if you're drowning in the ocean, some guy says. Hang on, I'm going to save you. And you don't hang on. You know, he said, hang on to me, I told you. You got to do this. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> 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 you know, is he trying to control you or save your life? Mm. So it's, it's how you perceive it, you know. It's, do you want help or not? You know, the help is there, you know. Do you, do you want the help or not? If you don't want help, then nobody's going to force you to do anything. Yeah, so. So anyway, the mind is a big player. But we have to redirect it. We have to focus it on that which is good for us, the spirit soul. One must elevate himself by his own mind, not degrade himself. If I'm just letting my mind go into all this, you know, material stuff, and now, I mean, the degradation is so, you know, rapid and so, you know, dark, you know, and, and, and it's promoted in 
such a way that, you know, the darkest thing is, is they coated it with the most glitter, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> saying this is where you're really going to be free. You know, if you buy into that, then the mind will take you to the lowest regions, you know. But if you, you know, follow these yoga teachings, like this Bhagavad Gita is a whole presentation of perfect yoga teachings, then you can elevate yourself by the mind. So it's good to be discriminatory and choose what we're going to listen to, what we're going to read, who we're going to associate with, you know, where we're going to go with our life. Kind of Would like, you like to come and do this? No, I don't. No thanks. Mm, you know, mm. I, I don't want. You know. Oh come on, no thanks. <laughs> Not what I'm doing with my life. You know, I have mm. have another direction in life that I'm going. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think it's time for Kirtan and. Yeah, Maybe it is. That's... Well, it is, as always. <laughs> time, time goes by very quickly. You know, I, I look at the watch and I'm like, ah, oh, we have a lot of time, no problem. <laughs> but then it's just like, quickly <laughs> disappears. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to do our standard Goranga Haribo mantra. In one of these podcasts, we're going to introduce a few other mantras so Stay you know, tuned. we just did a did a lecture in russia on saturday night and and uh we introduced some new mantras to people you know Goranga Haribo Haribo He Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Goranga, Goranga, Haribo, Haribo. Goranga, Goranga, Haribo, Haribo. Goranga, Goranga, Haribo, Haribo. Haribo, Goranga, Goranga, Haribo. Haribo, Goranga. Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo 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 Goranga Goranga Haribo Adibo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Goranga Haribo Haribo Goranga Haribo Goranga Haribo Goranga Haribo Goranga 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 Haribo Goranga 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 Haribo Goranga 
Goranga, Goranga, Goranga Hare Bo. 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 Goranga Hari Ba Goranga Hari Goranga Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Goranga Goranga Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Goranga 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 Hari Bo 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 Goranga Goranga Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo meditation to do that you know helps the mind go to the best place yeah you just focus on the mantra 
Very and that's easy. Easy. Yeah, easy. And fun. Mm. <laughs> Fun, yeah. Singing is uh, very therapeutic. Just singing in itself is very therapeutic. Mm. Uh, I don't. We won't have time now, but I have an article written by some psychologist about the the benefit of singing. Oh, yeah. We can start with that next. Uh, yeah, next talk. We can talk about that. <laughs> so you 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 take that, which is you know that's a you know, proven thing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> then you had the mantra to say you got you got a really, really beneficial package. All available. Just body for the mind, for the soul. And with intelligence, you decide to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna arrange it like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. That's intelligence. This is good for me, I'm gonna do it. Mm. Yeah, and it's not coming from your mind, but it's coming from the supreme person. Yeah, supreme guidance. So we need we need that knowledge. So the intelligence is actually using knowledge to make its decision. Mm. See? Because if we don't have the knowledge, then we don't. <laughs> the intelligence will be used in another way. Not for us, but for the enemy. <laughs> Infiltrated by the enemy. Yeah, right. This is... Well, thank you very much, Father yeah. As always, it's... Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah. always fun getting yeah. together and just having a little discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll so, see you next week again. Yeah, you bet. Yep. <laughs> Take care, Harry Bowl to Lynn and Frank and Yana, your mom and <laughs> whoever else I might know up there. <laughs> I yeah. think that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, no. One day maybe you could come here, you know, that would be amazing. Like our, our plan to go to Lufut, and I, I think we can still... Maybe maybe one day make that happen. You know? It's Lofoten, Lofoten. You call it Lofoten? Oh, well, we uh, yeah, Lofoten. Lofoten. But then I'm Swedish, so you should probably not listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it looks like it's spelled Lofoten. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess yeah, it is. But we, I think they say. But is that Lofoten. in the Ling? Is that in the Lingen Alp? No, it's further south, close to Buda. Oh, it's it's different. It's completely yeah, different. Yeah, completely different. Completely different. But it's. Yeah. Similar in the sense of like close to the ocean, sharp mountains that are really, yeah, amazing, beautiful, uh -huh. and that's, yeah, whatever yeah. word you want to say. Is that near Hostra? Hostra? Across from Narvik. There's Narvik and then there's. Oh, yeah. Hostra. That's close, I think. Hus. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, what is. Yeah, I, I think I know the place that you're referring to. Yeah, it's a, it's a small town. Yeah. You yeah. know, near uh, Narvik. Yeah. Hostra, well, I think it is. But that's Lofoten is closer to Norvik. Yeah. Oh, Hostra. Yeah, yeah, Hostra. <laughs> yeah, now no, I know what you mean. Yeah, Hostra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what, that, that's what, what I you said. That's what I tried to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I heard, but oh. now, now I, <laughs> I know what that's you mean. That's my intention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, I got to go. We got to get set up for the next uh, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So cool. yeah. Oh, one question: What do you think about the headphones now? I My like them. Headphones. You but you, you changed the top to black. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Is that all right? Does that look all right? That looks perfect. The, the, it makes them less distinguish, like distinguished. You, yeah. Because yeah. they they were broken right here. See. Oh. And they have a popsicle stick holding it together. The tape around it, and Slava couldn't accept that. You know, so I came up with the idea: just cover it with a piece of black cloth. Oh, so that's what you. <laughs> okay, so it's not new. And it's just... he said, "Well, I don't know, you know, but you know, if it's okay with Ruben, then it's all right with me because it's his show." So I'm. <laughs> 
I'm glad you you said that's perfect. So now you know I'm saved. The the popsicle also is on the right right side as well, and I'm looking at you from the left side, so it's not yeah. so prominent anyway. But you can see. Well, it's yeah, kind of it. like blends in with your hair. It's, yeah, it's, it's well, no worries. You know, popsicle popsicle headphones. That's, that's yeah. Oh, how we do it? Yeah. Same information. <laughs> Just <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. Take care, and we'll talk to you later, mate. <laughs> we'll do. Yeah. Namaste, Have a good hike. Haribo. <laughs> Haribo. Namaste. So that's it for today. Stay updated by clicking the subscribe button, and make sure to follow us on Facebook as well. And do share this podcast with your friends and family to make sure that they can have the benefit of this wisdom as well. See you next week again. Remember to stay true to yourself and dare to break trails.